I see you going. Um, back in the work from here today. Um, I've lost track of what the heck is. So I've actually got the ability to actually slide this <coughs> this way. So this is actually 77 centimetres, the door is 820. So what I might do is give me a bit more space here. I'm not worried about the opening closing up a bit. Um, I might actually move that that way so I don't have to chop the door. Uh, I'm only chopping three centimetres. Side. All right, guys. So we have this in place now. What we can do is just top down. So this piece here now, I'm using that to space it because that's going to go actually up, up above later on. So that way it can be exactly square. And this side's totally parallel to this side. Alright guys, so in order to fit this door in, I need to chop a bit of this off. There we go. So this is just a standard hollow core door. Twenty one two zero four zero.
pan and then the pan is it needs to get fixed all the way to it. Um, I'll have to get some new ones now because this will fit exactly there. You might be lucky. Let's see, I've got some short ones and some long ones. Alright. And then the plan is for that to open that one. Let's see if I've allowed enough for the hinges. Alright, next step. Alright guys, what we do here? We shall clamp this to my workbench. Which makes it easier to work with. Some hinges. Let's just make sure they're all the same direction. I'm not really fast. How exactly? Huh? So we'll just push the hinge hard up against this, so it's nice and seated properly. Mark out where the hinge is going. Do that for each of them. All right, now I can chisel these out, but I'm lazy. All right, so we'll get our hinge. We'll line it up with our router bit. So this is just a trimmer. Okay. Let's go. Guys, it's nice and flush. And pre drill these. I right, always do the center one to make sure it's nice and square and flush. Alright, set and repeat. You might be asking what's with all the Nerf guns. Well, <laughs> oh, my son and I decided to have a bit of a, a Nerf war out here early today. <laughs> so, uh, as per usual, he hasn't cleaned up his toys. <laughs> um, but yeah, we turned the back out into a bit of an obstacle course. It was fun. He needs to uh, put them back on his uh, his nerf wall. Uh, yes, he's got a. a we built um, a nerf gun rack for him. Um, check out the link above. Um, quietly, I was pretty impressed with it. <laughs> um, have a check it out. Let me know what you think. Alright, guys. Now I've got just um, to make it easier. Uh, these are just pack packing widgets, um, so we'll just have a few of these handy. We'll use these under the door. Get it off the ground. Hopefully there's enough clearance in the bottom when it swings open. Let's move it up a bit more. Now, based on the clearance here, I've got enough clearance here. I've worked about two or three mil. 
so I actually don't have to recess that. Or not yet, timber. Alright, let's open the door out. We'll put some packers underneath, get it to the right height, and then we'll screw them in place. This is fine, we don't have to pre-drill it much for that. Alright, let's see if she works. Now see if we've got the boards to fit. Alright guys, here for day two. Um, so we've got the door all fit. Fine, works really good. Opens up all the loading new shoes. Which is great, probably will be able to wheel straight out. Basically, it looks a bit weird. One side's placed, one side's not. So we're going to plug this with the board. Um, as it turns out, the weather board, because I've moved this this way now, the weather boards on that side are too short. So it turns out that these are actually long enough to go to that side. So I had to redo this wall anyway, so I'm going to use, take these off, use them on that side. Um, and I had planned on actually pushing this back a fraction. So then those boards will work perfectly. So we win. <laughs> Otherwise, if I have to order it from the local hardware with COVID, uh, it could take me three or four days. To get it. So, all right. So let's uh, do all this stuff. All right. We'll leave it there. Yeah, that was pretty easy. All right. So let's now start lining up the boards on this side. Start fixing them. Alright, guys, so what we're going to do now is line this up from here. So we get the space. I'll put about a 2mm gap in between the top there. I've drawn a line. Now, what's going to happen is that because I've got these existing boards in place, normally you would just start from the bottom and work your way up. So what, I need, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to draw lines, markers, so I know where to start the bottom one, okay? So now with these, um, they're 170 mil, uh, and there's about a 20 mil um, overhang underneath each other board. So what I've done now is I've made a spacer which is at 150. And then with the bottom one, we may, may need to trim a little bit because I've left a decent gap on the bottom so I can swing quite high. So let's fiddle around with the bottom one first. Then once we've got that right, that should be pretty straightforward. All right, guys, let's pop the first board in. So we've got a little bit of liquid nails on it. Let's line the first one up. Yeah, so because this door is hollow, we're um, making sure we use some liquid nails to adhere it. Otherwise, we're just using some brads to fix it. Oh, 
by four doors, we've got timber all the way around the edges and a little bit extra in the center for the locks. But other than that, there's not much. <laughs> Alright, so that works fine. Now what I've done also is on these corners, I've cut this on a 45 degree angle. This will enable us to be able to open the door to a, a fair distance this way. Otherwise what's going to happen is if you don't put the 45 on here, it's actually going to just go stop there. And I needed a little bit more flexibility. Alright, first one done, let's get going. Alright guys, so I'll just show you how I cut that 45 degree cut because it is a bit of a funny board to cut. So these are all the off cuts. So I've just got the blade on 45 degrees, okay? Now, I want the cut on this side of the board. Now, just use the cross sled, and then what I do is I line the edge of the board up with this part of um, the insert plate, okay? Right there, pop it on. <coughs> All right, that's that simple. Obviously, just be careful because that could get jammed in there and flick up. So make sure you got your protective gear. I didn't have any of that happen, but it could. Uh, and they obviously can break up because they're quite flimsy. But that's the finish you end up with. So that is perfectly square, okay? But that is cut on the 45 degree angle. All right, so that's how you do it. Test fit. Should we open it and see if it works? We'll wait until you end. Alright, almost there. Hope the last one fits. On the hood. Alright, last one. Leave us a little bit of a gap at the top. Okay. So we're just touching a little bit there. So based on the, um, that's pretty much as far as she can go, which is fine. That's cool. Don't have to think of uh, some sort of magnetic lock or I'll put probably just a little pull there. Just open up. That's fine, I'll be able to get the trolley in and out. That looks nice to finish. 
All right, let's uh, look at what we're doing with the other side. Get that one right. And um, yeah, let's look at what we're doing with the other side. Get that side right. And then we can start on the, the double doors uh, and the awning. And finish off the tool wall, it's never ending. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Next section. All right, so get that, let's give those boards a bit of a white sand. take off a lot of the high points and some of the patching and stuff like that. This feels really good. Um, I love this. I never thought I'd actually get a lot of use out of it because I've never really owned a belt sand before. But since I got this one. If you want to check out the review on it, click on the card above. But yeah, it's actually really good. Alright guys, so what we're going to do, we've got this little stainless steel uh, knob. I'll pop that in place. And I've also got a little magnetic lock. So we'll pop that in. I'm gonna pop this just. All right, third time lucky. Okay, that works fine. Good. All right, we'll see how it goes with the wind, whether or not uh, it ends up flapping around in the middle of the night. Um, that seems fine. Otherwise, I can always put a second magnet in. All right, guys, so here's the finished product. All looks nice and neat and symmetrical. Had to go get a couple of uh, new boards for this side. And what I ended up doing, the right hand side was going to be a little bit skinnier than the other one. So I ended up uh, <laughs> matching it because um, <laughs> I like my symmetrics. Uh, and then what will happen is then when I've got the two sliding doors, the two barn doors, it should be perfectly symmetrical. Well, that's the plan anyway. <laughs> And you'll see also on this side, I ended up um, putting a 45 degree cut on the sides of all these. And that was just basically so when I opened the door, I could get more than just a 90 degree opening. Okay. So what I thought I'd do is on this side is actually just do exactly the same thing. I quite like the finish actually. And I've just put a new piece of pine there and that'll be the door jam. All right, another job completed, almost ready for painting. And then we'll go into uh, <laughs> the next job, the never ending workshop. <laughs>